Now, when it comes to uh, limits of a function, there is a theorem. It says the limit of a function at a point, if it exists, is unique. So, now let's prove this. Let's say there is a function and the limit exists and is not unique. That means not only does f of x have a limit at some point, but it is also not unique. That means there can be more than one. Uh, there is more than one limit for this function. So this we can write it as limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to L1. And because we have said it is not unique, let's say it has two limits, so L1 and L2, right? So which means L1 is not equal to L2. Not unique basically means that these two limits are not equal. So which implies that there is a gap between these two. L1 minus L2 is greater than 0. The distance between L1 and N2 is greater than 0. Now let's say let uh, L1 minus L2 remember which is greater than E sorry greater than 0 let it be equal to 2 epsilon why 2 epsilon uh, because uh, you know uh, uh, some simplifications can happen uh, later on much more easily okay so i have l minus l2 the distance between them is greater than 0 and let's say the distance between these is equal to 2 epsilon now let's take the first limit limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to l1 for all epsilon greater than 0 there exists a real number delta 1 greater than 0 such that f of x minus l1 is less than epsilon where the distance between x and a is between 0 and delta 1 and let's say similarly f of x the distance between f of x and l2 is less than epsilon whenever x minus a the distance between these two is between 0 and delta 2 remember since there are two limits there will be two of these okay so let delta be equal to the minimum of this whichever is lower lower of delta 1 and delta 2 so which means that f of x minus l1 is less than epsilon and f of x minus l2 is less than epsilon the distance between x and a is between 0 and delta. So instead of a delta 1, delta 2, now we can say delta itself. Now let's go back to this L1 minus L2. Now let's manipulate. Let's introduce f of x. Right. So let's in, in, introduce f of x minus f of x. We can do that because these two cancel out, it is as good as 0. So, as such the value does not change. Now, let us reorganize this. So, f of x minus L2. So, L1 minus f of x. So, in which case this would become as f of x minus L2 plus L1 minus f of x. But here it will be less than or equal to okay now i can write this as f of x minus l2 plus f of x minus l1 
if we are talking of 3 minus 2 or 2 minus 3 this is equal to 1 this is equal to minus 1 there is a difference but if we talk of magnitudes what happens this also right would be equal to 1 okay so now remember this is equal to this now this is less than epsilon this is less than epsilon right so which means we can say that l1 minus l2 is less than 2 epsilon right x minus a this condition remains right which means remember 2 epsilon is what we have said let l minus l2 be equal to 2 epsilon so now we do substitution again so this becomes l1 minus l2 now does this make sense this will always be equal right so which means this is not possible or it's basically meaningless therefore l1 is not equal to l2 is false which implies l1 is equal to l2 which implies that the limit is unique so this is called proof by contradiction we start with an assumption and we, we end up with a contradiction to prove that our assumption was wrong okay anyhow think that's enough bye for now